Hey guys, this is Martin Wright from Argos Dog Training and today we are going to be looking at Pet Finder in order to just go over some ideas about adopting or rescuing the perfect pet dog for you and your family. Um, so that's what it is, that's what we'll be doing. Very excited about this, it should be a lot of fun. Alright, so we just finished up with Zeus here. Let's look for another pet. Let's take a look around this website, get familiar with it. I'm going to click back up here. Um, it says, find your perfect pet by name. So I don't know what that means. Oh, by breed name. Okay. Find your perfect pet dog breed. Let's pick a breed this time. Um, let's see here. I am going to pick my breed. I'm going to pick a Doberman. There's a lot of dog breeds. Wow. I used to know how many of them were AKC recognized, but I don't remember that anymore, guys. So it's just taking up space. Here we go. Doberman Pinscher. All right. So there's some breed characteristics about this dog here um, that I really like. I like these little charts that they might have that you could fill in, like they're kind of filled in. And um, energy level of a Doberman is four out of five. Exercise requirements is three out of five. but the energy level is four out of, anyway. Um, playfulness is three out of five. Affection um, level is three out of five. Friendliness to dogs is two out of five. Dee Dee would have a serious problem with this. Um, friendliness to other pets is three out of five. Friendliness to strangers is one out of five. Mm. Watchfulness is five out of five. Ease of training, guys, they have it five out of five here. So Dobermans are like the easiest dogs to train, according to this um, pet finder. And of course, uh, grooming requirements, one out of five. Heat sensitivity, three out of five. And vocality, vocality, um, that's a strange word for me, but um, I guess that's five out of five. So I guess Didi makes a lot of noise. Here it goes on into the um, history of the breed, the temperament and all that. Definitely things you could look at. Yeah, definitely things you could look at. That stuff is well known. So that's very interesting. Um, let's see if I could find where I could adopt possibly a Doberman. All right, so Doberman pincers available um, nearby. And now I'm looking at these dogs and I can see two of them are clearly Doberman looking and the other two are clearly not Doberman looking. All right, so whenever you're doing them with rescue dogs, you have to expect that there's going to be more mixed breed dogs. But I'm going to pick one of these two that are clearly uh, Doberman looking. And it's Pen Penny or Ezra. Because I'm a Star Wars nerd, I'll pick Ezra because that's a Star Wars character. So I'll just pick that one. Um, all right, so we have a picture of Ezra here. Ezra is a very slim dog. It says young male. It says Bloomfield, Connecticut, which is quite a few miles from here, but um, that's fine because it is uh, supposed to be a pure, I believe, Doberman, purebred Doberman. Um, so Bloomfield, Connecticut, slim dog, um, wearing a martingale collar. I see that. Once again, the dog is on a porch, um, and then they have one with the dog in the snow. So there's only really three photos of this dog. There's no videos of this particular dog. All right, so now we go to Ezra. It's in Bloomfield, Connecticut. Um, young male, large, and he's bicolor. So there's two colors there. Coat length, short. Well, that's normal. Up to date on vaccination, it's, and he is neutered. Um, good in a home with other dogs. Okay. And once again, we have that pet finder um, bell that tells us to, you know, take responsibility um, and security steps before making online payments, you know, so be aware that some people might be out to get you, I think is what they're saying. All right, first thing that jumps out, it says right here, 10 month old Doberman pincer mix. All right, so he's definitely a mixed breed, or at least that's what they're claiming. He's expected to be about 90 pounds. He's very high energy. Um, highly intelligent, incre uh, incredibly trainable, requires several hours of exercise on a daily basis. Several, um, okay. Including playtime in a fenced-in yard or in structured daycare. Very social and playful, does well 
as an apple of your eye or with um, equally or with an equally confident, energetic, and playful dog friend. As the apple of my eye. Well, my wife is the apple of my eye, and I hope she watches this and sees that I say that. <laughs> All right. And he will not be replacing. Anyway. Um, all right, mastered crate training. Now let's stop there for a quick second. Um, every time that you move a dog from one location to another location, all the associations change. A dog could be good in a crate in my house, which there's been hundreds of dogs who have been good in a crate in my house, but are bad in their owner's house. All right, moving on. He's working on a house and leash training, so it's being worked on, all right. He's a diamond in the rough. Ezra's adoption fee is $450. That includes the cost of spay and neuter, up to date on vaccination, foster care, and rescue and transportation fees. And then it just basically says fill out, um, fill it out. So this is a little different than the last dog that we looked at. I could tell that the, whoever filled this in, um, it, it's not as like clear, there's not as many like high warnings about this dog. So it's probably a more friendly dog than the last dog. Um, I don't see anything in here um, that would make me think that the adoption agency is trying to restrict my behavior um, or the things that I could do with my dog. So that's what we got on Ezra. Um, I'm going to look on now. So looking at this dog, what would I say? Where would I say this dog would be fitted well? If I was, you know, adopting out this dog, that's probably something I should talk about with him. He's a cute dog. Um, they say he's a Doberman mix. None of that matters. It looks like a straight Doberman to me in these in these photos, but none of that matters. Um, where would he fit? Well, the fact that he's so energetic, I would want him to be so around energetic people as well. Cesar Milan says this thing in one of his books where when we're adopting a dog, we want to adopt a dog with a lower energy level than the lowest energy level member of our, of our family, you know, human family. So that is something that I would take into account. If I have, a, like if I'm a low energy person and I have one high energy person in my family, then I might not want a really high energy dog. You know, because we're just not going to have the same kind of interests. Um, so that is something I would be thinking about. I'd want, it says here, somebody with um, knowledgeable and with breed experience. Um, dog experience, I think, is good enough. I don't think you actually have to have had a Doberman in your house in order to be able to take care of a Doberman well. You do want to have experience with working breeds in general. You know, like a German, I believe a German Shepherd owner. Um, someone who takes care of a German Shepherd well could also take care of a Doberman well. Somebody who takes care of a pit bull well could probably take care of a Doberman well. You know, um, so that is what I'd look for more. I wouldn't let that be something that stops me from applying for this dog, Ezra. Um, several hours of exercise. Now, maybe they're just trying to, like, Get it so that way you understand that you have to spend a lot of time with the dog. But any dog you adopt, you will have to spend a lot of time with. Um, that's just the way it goes. And the reason why we're adopting the dog is because we're planning on spending a lot of time, hopefully, with that dog. You know, so you're going to have to spend time with the dog. In my experience with my Doberman, she's not a dog, especially at eight years old, probably since she was like four or five um, till around eight years old. She's not a dog that requires a lot. You know, um, I've trained dogs that require a lot. She doesn't seem to be that way. Um, but this dog is different. His energy level could be higher than my dog, Dee Dee's energy level. Um, at the same time, it doesn't mean that all the exercise needs to be physical. You know, um, exercise can very well be mental exercise and it can burn energy just as well. Um, this includes playtime in a fenced in area or in a structured daycare. Um, definitely playtime outside with your Doberman is valuable to you and to your Doberman. As far as the structured daycare goes, for most of my life, there, there weren't even daycares. When they did come up with daycares, when they started coming out, there weren't, for most of my life, any structured daycares. I believe in the Boston area, I was one of the very first 
who actually called their daycare or structured daycare when I was doing it. Um, there weren't, it wasn't something that was advertised a lot. We, at some point, we should definitely make an episode about how to tell a structured daycare from an unstructured daycare. But um, yeah, do I believe dogs need to go to daycare? Nope. I don't believe they need to go to daycare. I think that they could live happy and successful lives without ever going to a daycare. Um, and I think there's a lot of evidence of that. All right, so that's that. I think that's all I have for Ezra. Let's move on. So I hope this has been really helpful to you. Um, one of these days we might do a live thing where we talk about dog breeds and we go through Pet Finder and you're able to ask questions directly. By the way, if you do have questions, ask Argos. Hashtag ask Argos and we'll get to those and we'll be able to answer them. Um, if you like what you see here today, definitely subscribe to our channel. Um, check the description below for more links to our other social media accounts. And until the next time, enjoy your dog and enjoy your day. Or enjoy your day and enjoy your dog. Yeah, that. Enjoy your day and enjoy your dog.